crisis in Syria dominated discussions at the U.N. General Assembly. Not much progress there, though, but world leaders did make headway on the landmark climate deal. CCTV's Leeling Tan joining us now from the United Nations. And Leeling, how would you describe this year's General Assembly? Hey there, Mike. Now there's a General Assembly high-level week delivered good news and bad news and also a few surprises. But let's start with the bad news first because that's where all the drama was and we saw fireworks here at the UN General Assembly as well when world leaders use this as a platform to air grievances against neighbors and also take aim at each other over some of the world's most pressing issues from the DPRK to Syria. For the UN General Assembly, Monday wrapped a full week that was both high profile and high drama. Over flashpoints like the DPRK, world leaders traded accusations. The DPRK raged against alleged US and South Korean military provocations. South Korea and Japan slammed the DPRK's nuclear program of nuclear and missile programs. China opposes that program too, but Premier Li struck a more conciliatory tone. On the Korean nuclear issue, we should remain committed to denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, uphold peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula, and seek consultation and dialogue-based solution. India lashed out at Pakistan over Kashmir. Pakistan is so much and Ukraine raged against Russia over its alleged support for the rebellion in eastern Ukraine. From Russia. The week had begun with two summits on how to help more than 21 million refugees displaced worldwide. China took the lead in pledging more humanitarian aid. We would like to provide 100 million U.S. dollars of additional humanitarian assistance on top of the previous pledges while considering taking further supportive measures. The next day, Premier Li upped the ante, pledging a total of $300 million to help refugees. Then, word reached the UN of a military strike on a UN aid convoy outside Aleppo, Syria. The Security Council went into crisis mode. Two council members, the US and Russia, blamed each other for the attack. What Russia is sponsoring and doing is not counterterrorism, it is barbarism. We need to see talk of a sincere desire to separate those who are working with the American coalition from al-Nusra. China played peacemaker again. China calls for an early resumption of the Geneva peace talks. We call upon all parties to follow the political process to reach arrangements that meet the interests of all parties. External forces should not use the conflict to pursue their selfish gains. There were also issues that almost everyone here could agree on, such as the sustainable development goals that saw forward momentum to end hunger and poverty, promote health, education and gender equality. And we also saw more than 30 countries ratify the landmark climate agreement, and that agreement could go into effect by the end of the year. Mike? Also, another big event, uh, the fifth straw poll to select the next UN Secretary General took place. Who are the leading candidates? Uh, well, the leading candidate right now is Antonio Guterres, who is the former Prime Minister of Portugal and also the former UN High Commissioner for Refugees. Now, he's one of nine candidates. In second and third place are Vuk Jeremic of Serbia and Miroslav Lychuk of Slovakia. Now, this is the fifth straw poll, as you mentioned, in which Security Council members get to vote three ways, encourage, discourage or no opinion. And in four out of five polls so far. Antonio Guterres has been the consistent front runner. But that doesn't mean he's a shoe in for the job, Mike, because there is another polling session in October in which permanent members of the council will be able to veto any candidate that they don't like. For example, Russia is reportedly not too keen on the Portuguese candidate Guterres because he's, a, he's from a member, a NATO member country, while the U.S. is said not to be too excited about the Serbian candidate Jeremic, uh, Jeremic uh, because he had previously opposed Kosovo's independence. So there's still a lot of uncertainty. As I mentioned, nine candidates. Guterres may be in the lead, but there's still room for surprises. Uh, the uncertainty remains over who will step into Ban Ki Moon's shoes when he leaves the office as Secretary General at the end of the year. Leeling Tan, live for us there at the United Nations in New York City. Thanks so much. In 